Hello everyone, I am Muhammad Munuruddin Sheikh. Today I am going to discuss a poem namely Where the mind is without fear. Now as it is a seminar presentation, naturally my topic is the element of nationalism in the poem Where the mind is without fear. Before going to the text, we should say something regarding our beloved poet namely Rabindranath Tagore. Rabindranath Tagore had made us proud when he got the world famous Nobel Prize for his literary achievement. Specifically, he got the novel because of his anthology namely Songs Offering. The Bengali translation of Songs Offering is Gitanjali. This versatile poet has written so many literary pieces in all the literary genres, novel, plays, poetry, short stories and even he has written so many songs known as Rabindra Sangeet. So this poet has shown his mastery in nationalistic sentiment. The poem in question specifically focuses on the nationalism of the, of the poet but in the poem the poet does not show any chauvinistic nationalism better to say he has focused on the internal reformation. Instead of abusing the British and external forces, he emphasizes that the Indians, that the Indians, the youths of India should be internally reformed. Their mentality, their mindset, their cognitive faculty should be raised. Rabindranath Tagore thought that the invaders, the British, British or the outsiders can be challenged with intellectual fertility and not with prejudice, superstition, obsession, false nationalism, chauvinistic religiosity. He actually wanted that the human resource in India should be very strong. The human resource should be internally strong so that they can fight with the enemies with their intellectuality. Hence, instead of abusing others, blaming others, he gives us some advices to the Indians and it is his new type of nationalism better to say superior nationalism let's come to the poem the first line is where the mind is without fear and the head is, is held high Rabindranath Tagore hopes that the Indians must not do any kind of activities for which they will be mentally afraid of facing the enemies or facing everything. Their head will be held high if they are not guilty minded. If they are of free mind, the poem is started signaling on the uncertain land. Actually, the poet wants to place his country on a specific place and he is going to lay out the place first. He does not take his country's name in the beginning, beginning of the poem. 
but he thinks that at first his countrymen will be fearless actually they must not be associated with any kind of evil or guilty activities only then their head can be high where knowledge is free the next line is where knowledge is free meaning tagore wants to portray a country in which the giving and knowledge giving and taking knowledge will be without any barrier without any political or economical stress the environment of giving and taking knowledge must not be under any kind of stress where the world has not been broken into up into fragments by narrow domestic calls very significant line you know narrow domestic calls are not composed of cement or sand or rot it is the mental walls it is the domestic walls instead of being indians we are being separated we are being mentally detached because of our domestic walls domestic walls are composed of narrowness prejudice superstition chauvinistic nationalism and at the same time religious biogatry hence rabindra wants to remove these walls so that the indians can be of own mind if we are separated then the enemies can have the sway over us we must not be separated due to our narrow domestic walls because you know united united we stand divided we fall if we the indians are of own mind if we are not divided by our narrow domestic walls separated by our narrow, narrow domestic walls then our strength will come where words come out from the depth of truth the more famous line why because the indians must be truthful and the truthfulness must come out of their very hard very mod very narrow where tireless striving stretches its arms towards perfection look at the stress on the cognitive aspect the poet wants that the indians must be working and working and working and they must reach the perfection their continuous support must be there where the clear stream of prison has not lost its weary way into the dreary desert sand of the dead habit the famous line is this is a famous line it means it compares that because of the dead habit we are being stagnant as in the case of a river in the desert sand we see that the river cannot reach the destination in the same way in the same way if we are occupied by our dead habits then our movement will be stopped in the path where the mind is led forward by thee into ever widening thought and action the refers to god almighty god the minds of the indians must be guided by the god itself with the inculcation of thoughts and action continual thoughts and action only then a famous country can be erected into that heaven of freedom my father let my country away do not comes to the conclusion by mentioning some criteria of a country better to say a utopian country and at the last line the poet says that my country should be transplant better to say planted in that very freedom heaven of freedom refers to a heaven where freedom will be absolute and this detail that will be a that will be a utopia this is how 
Rabindranath Tagore shows his nationalism. Thank you. Thank you very much.